After covering the basics in a previous video, we attempt to model a more complex problem using SymPy. In this case, we will build several classes and process methods, which interact. For instance, waiting for a process before completing another process or restarting a process. If you haven't watched my introduction to SymPy, you can find it here. This might be useful to get started with events and environments. As in the previous video, I created a virtual environment and installed SymPy, NumPy and Matplotlib. Now let's think about the problem. Let's assume that we run a store that sells rice. Customers arrive randomly and buy between one and three units of rice. The initial stock could be 100. We receive shipments to replenish our stock. A container ship with a capacity of say 15, a tiny ship, starts from our port. However, the length of the journey might change, might vary, disrupting our supply chain. This model's objective is to predict the rice stock. Simulated stock levels are collected for data visualization or further statistical analysis. In practice, such simulations are run many times to simulate a probability density functions. These can be used to calculate percentiles, for instance values at risk, or define cutoff points such as stop losses in trading algorithms. As always, the script and all the material is available on GitHub, a link is down below in the description. The script starts with our usual import statements, followed by the model parameters, defining the total number of purchase events, so that is customers arriving and buying quantities of rice and the initial stock. You notice that the stock is a list indicated by rectangular brackets and we have a starting value. So the idea is in the simulation to append new values once we simulate the next level of stock. Of course, you can collect this information in other ways as well. It doesn't have to be a list, it could be a NumPy array, whatever you prefer. In contrast to our first example using SymPy, in this case, um, we do proper object-oriented programming by defining several classes because we have a more advanced simulation. In most cases, it is useful to commence a process when initializing an instance of a class. We accomplish this task in the dunder init method. The store class captures our rice inventory. The attribute stock provides access to current levels of stock starting with the initial level of 100. To work with processes, we need to refer to the environment. To be precise, the environment instance called env, env for environment. This environment instance is passed as an argument. Finally, we start the process method called run by applying the process method to the environment instance. Now, that sounds a little complicated. We will look at this one more time. So as you can see, we define our own class, which we call store, just open close brackets. Now store is our model for our rice stock. And we capture here our customers arriving at random. You see the dunder init method. Now, if you're used to object oriented programming, this will run once you create an instance of this class. In the dunder init method, we just pass our arguments. So here we store the environment on our instance, so self dot end for environment, and we just pass it in from the argument. We have our initial stock, 
it's 100, so this is simply defined. We could do it differently. We could also pass that in here as an argument. Perfectly fine to do that. And then, and this is the, the interesting bit, this is different from standard classes. We um, refer to our environment instance and then process and then self.run. So we call a run method on the instance. So what this does is it starts running our method, which we call run, which is defined further below. So the, the idea is when we initialize an instance of the store class, we also trigger the process method run. Now, similar to our previous example, the process method run rolls a dice, basically. So it generates a probability and adjusts the stock if a customer arrives. The quantity purchased can be in the interval from one to three units. A uniform distribution applies. If a customer arrives, the process is paused for one period and then the dice roll restarts. The reduced level of stock is added to our list for further analysis. So we are in the while loops. We keep it running until an event is triggered. We generate this probability. We check whether the probability is less than 10%. This is, of course, here hard coded. We don't have to do this. We could again pass an argument into. Um, this run process method if we wish to modify this. And then we um, do a print statement that a customer arrives and we also simply number, we count them, um, referring to the environment and using the now attribute. We have seen this in the previous video. We adjust our stock. So this um, adjusts our attribute stock, which is defined above which um, adjusts according to um, a random draw in the interval from one to three. And then we can print our current stock and we append the um, stock list. Now, of course, this basically means that um, we would assume that this stock list exists as a global variable somewhere. Yeah? So that's something we have to think about if we work, um, you know, um, on this code for a larger project. So this might maybe be handled differently um, depending on our requirements. We could, for instance, have the stock list here as an attribute. This might be a little bit more ele elegant. Then you see our yield. So that's our yield keyword, which indicates we have a generator function here. We refer to the environment instance and then we say timeout one. So we basically stop, we pause this process once a customer is generated. Now to restock our store, we need to send container ships. The ship class refers to the environment instance again and starts a process method. So if you look at this, it's quite similar. So we refer to our environment, which we pass as an argument. We also pass in the store because now we interact with our store as well. And then we have our capacity, the ship's capacity. So these are tiny ships. And we start the process um, as in the previous example. So this would refer to our run um, process. So this is um, our method, our process method, which operates on our ship instance. And we pass in the store so we can immediately refer to the other instance, which um, comes from um, the store class. And then we um, basically start the ship. So we start our ship and then we have um, maybe some waiting time um, on C. And you see here a reference to another process. So basically what happens is we um, run this run method, the ship starts, it triggers our on C process. Again, that's a method of our class. So this process method on C basically determines our travel time. And you see that here it's random between 7 and 13. It might be weeks, months, whatever you want it to be. And um, again, you see it triggers an, an event which gives you a timeout 
and it refers to time. And this time here is randomly um, determined. Strictly speaking, of course, you could put everything into one line of code, um, but sometimes it's easier to read if you separate that. The idea is the following. You start the ship, you start this on C process, and then basically this while loop is waiting until that process is finished. Then you reach your destination and you unload your rice. Then you adjust your stock. So the stock is the attribute of our store instance and we adjust it according to our own attribute capacity. So that's our little ship. And then I can do some print statements just to check whether the code is working, that the ship reaches, blah, de, blah. And then we have um, a new adjusted stock available. And um, it might take some time to unload so we have another timeout. So that will stop the process. And then this whole thing would continue basically. So that's the idea. So that is a little bit more complicated now, but um, you see um, things can become a lot more interesting. You can start processes, you can wait for a process to finish. So, um, you know, you can have a lot of interaction in these simulations and they can become actually quite powerful. Of course, just a, a word of warning in more advanced projects, one needs to write tests that ensure that the alleged attributes actually exist. Because we have here quite a few interactions between various instances. So we always should do proper testing. Now, finally, we create the simulation class. We call this the sim class, which initializes our simulation. In my view, it is quite convenient to do this in a separate class because many things are happening. Um, again, we refer to the environment instance. The store instance is saved as an attribute as well as a ship instance. Once we initialize an instance of a sim class, a store and ship emerges and their processes commence. So you see that here we have the dunder init method. We refer to the environment. We um, create a, a store instance which we save as an attribute on our sim class and we do the same with our ship here as well. The final step consists of the creation of an environment and simulation instance. So here we create our environment instance. So we just refer to simpy and then the environment class and then we um, run our own class sim. So we create our, an instance of our sim class um, and we pass in the environment as required. And then we just run this um, whole simulation until we reach our destination. Yeah, so depending uh, of course on our requirements, we specified the num, the total number somewhere up here of, yeah, it's 1000, so we do it 1000 times. We have 1000 events we cover. And finally, we do a visualization of the stock, which we save, which is um, quite nice. This is very standard, um, so I don't think we have to go through this. Good. With our environment active, again, this is indicated here in our brackets. Let's run this and see what happens. Let's have a sip of tea. So here we are and our simulation indicates that we are running out of stock quite quickly. Now you see you can run quite complex simulations in SimPy and you can make it in fact even more complex if you wish. SimPy is a, is a fantastic library and I strongly encourage you to explore this further. I use it a lot in the context of supply chain um, management because many issues are not observed. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, like and share and subscribe to the channel. I see you next time.